Hello. Well, the, today I'm going to talk about uh, No Country for Old Men, starring Tommy Lee Jones, Harvey R. Bardem, and Josh Brolin. Um, in summary, this movie is about a sheriff, played by Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Sheriff Bell, who's going after, uh, well... He's trying to find uh, Loyola Moss, who's played by Josh Brolin, uh, after he, after hunting, and he came across uh, a lot of dead bodies from a drug deal gone wrong, and uh, there was a guy where he found uh, a, like a satchel full of money. And, uh, he, uh, also very, he's somebody who's still alive, who wants water, but he doesn't have any with him. He goes home. He also took a pistol from the guy where the money was, and he goes home and he also took a, like a machine gun too, from the guy who wanted water and was bleeding out. And he, uh, you know, he has the money and he just uh, sort of has like, as he's sleeping, he's like, he can't sleep. So he's going to go and go back to give the guy water. Though, of course, by the time he gets there, the guy's dead because it's nighttime. And, um, he, uh, gets chased by people who come back and uh, who also, uh, pop his tires. And he, uh, runs down towards the river and, uh, gets back. Uh, home and he puts the machine gun under the uh, uh, his trailer. His wife's wondering what he's doing and uh, later on he goes and uh, yeah, he goes on the run uh, after getting his wife out of town all the while uh, uh, Anton Chigurh who's a hitman who's sent to go to get the money and he uh goes to uh find basically find the money and then basically kills anybody who gets in his way we see him at the very beginning he's pulled over and is arrested and he is he goes uh as uh, handcuffed Go, uh, he gets the cuffs out from behind his back, and then he strangles the cop who brought him in, and then he gets the cuffs off, and then he goes off and gets a new car. That's something that he does. He goes and kills anybody uh, who, uh, which, who who needs a car. He kills them. He goes and uses their car, and then he he has like this uh, thing that would be used to like uh, kill cattle like uh, uh cows and all that for you know meat for meat where you goes in and out you know they don't feel anything at all they die and then you can slaughter them for meat he has that will attach to like a hose to an air tank and uh of course he has like a uh site uh not a silence, because there's no such thing as actual silencers, even though everybody calls them that. There's a suppressor, a shotgun with a suppressor. It makes it even more intimidating, because it's even longer. Uh, you know, shotgun is. But uh, he uh, he's going around trying to find him, and then uh, Sheriff Bell's trying to find Llewellyn to try and help him with all this stuff, because of the Mexican, like the cartel, everything, and goes to 
Mexico and all these other people get involved, and it's really a big thing. And honestly, it's quite interesting just to see how all this unravels. And this is a Coen Brothers film, and this is kind of a bit different, especially if you are used to a lot of their comedies. You know, they have done serious stuff, in the past. like uh, Blood Simple was probably the best example. Um, but, uh, you know, they're really good. They're very good at all this sort of dramatic stuff. There are a few moments of humor, but they you don't really laugh. They're not out, like, laugh out loud hilarious, like Fargo or The Big Lebowski. It's none of that at all, really, in this movie. There's so small little moments of laughter that is only good to relieve the tension at times, because this movie is quite intense. So if you have never seen that, just be pre prepared to see it. And I don't want to really... Even though this movie well, this year will be 16 years old, so in a way it's pretty old. So there's... To, well, at least to way everybody looks at movies now, it's an old movie, basically. Anything 10 years old, it's an old movie at this point. But, um, you know, this movie uh, got a lot of acclaim. Won four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Director... Adapted Screenplay, and Best Supporting Actor uh, for Harvey R. Bardem. Um, a lot of people wonder who the lead of the film is, and that'd be Tommy Lee Jones as the sheriff. Because in a lot of ways, this film is uh, his journey. Because, you know, he's at the end of his career. He's planning to retire. Um, he feels like he has nothing really to do anymore yeah, with all the how things keep getting more and more violent as the years go on it's like he sort of at a certain point he says like he feels overmatched like what he whatever he is doing doesn't really seem to matter a whole lot because you know he might get one criminal in the you know in in prison or some pr criminals in prison, or might have to uh, shoot and kill some people because of how violent they are. And the only way to deal with them is with violence. You know, unfortunately, that's how some you have to deal with. But regardless, you know, it's like no matter whatever he does, no matter what good he does, puts people away, has to put some down... There's always going to be more criminals that are just going to be just as violent, if not more so, than the ones that he has dealt with already. And it's quite interesting. And also, uh, with uh, Llewellyn's character, he's just like, you know, I'm a, he's like, he was a Vietnam vet. Uh, and so, and he's like, retire. He did like, you know, it's not too much is reveal a whole lot about some of these characters basically nothing is revealed about uh anton Chigurh other than he's great at what he does he's persistent he does not give up no matter what even if like even if he got the money back he'd still go to kill Llewellyn, you know as um as you know um uh, woody harrelson's character uh he shows up in this film is somebody who's trying to find Anton, uh, Stephen Root, who has worked with uh, the Coen brothers many times, hires Her uh, Woody Harrelson's character to go find him and deal with him. And he's like, you know, uh, he sees uh, Llewellyn in the hospital and tells him that, you know, Anton would probably just kill you just for inconveniencing him. That's the character that uh, Anton is. It's just like, you know, you, no matter what, you are going to die if you get into his crosshairs. It doesn't matter if, like, if you took something, be it on purpose, like in Llewellyn's case, or even by accident, like, you saw something and took it uh, completely, seemingly meaningless. And if there's, like, a tracker or whatever, and even if what, there's not a tracker, because there's a tracker in the satchel of money that he then leaves but even then he still f finds out basically where he is and all this stuff throughout the film so you know the tracker doesn't entirely 
mean much at the end of the day because he's going to find out where one is no matter what. So it, it, it's just a fantastic film, honestly. Um, I've talked about some films last year from 2007, like uh, Zodiac and uh, There Will Be Blood. I do prefer those films over this. Well, this is a good movie, so it's one of those where, uh, like, Zodiac's my favorite film of 2007, but it wasn't nominated for any, like, major awards, like an Academy Awards or anything, but uh, There Will Be Blood was, and I think uh, between this and There Will Be Blood, I would, I would have picked There Will Be Blood for, like, best picture and stuff like that, like, that, that uh, this film won. Um, but I definitely see why this movie won the awards it, uh, it, it got, uh, it is reclaimed as much as it is. Um, it is, is not my favorite Coen Brothers film at his Fargo. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I would place, place this for my favorite, uh, uh, Coen Brothers movies. Uh, I think Oh Brother or Art, that would probably be my, um, <clears throat> Second favorite uh, Coen Brothers film. I think then after that, maybe The Big Lebowski. I don't know. I'd, I'd really have to rewatch all of their movies again. Um, and then just... Because Fargo is my favorite of theirs. I, there's no doubt about that. And then second is Oh Brother Where Art Thou. I have a particular uh, history with that film that I, I've really grew up watching quite a bit and then for me Fargo when I saw that that was just you know as perfect a, as could be for a Coen Brothers film and a comedy in general like a dark comedy it's just I love it uh but yeah I don't know where I would this I think this could be my top five Coen Brothers films, but again, I have to rewatch a bunch of them to try and see about an order. I know what my uh, like top two are, <laughs> but this is an excellent movie. Um, very different, uh, especially if you are uh, typically aware of the Coen Brothers comedy films. Uh, I'll just say that, that this is just a different uh, film uh, in tone and everything. And um, yeah, everybody in this film is excellent. Um, yeah. Uh, Kelly McDonald is in this. She plays a uh, Carla Jean. Moss, uh, you know, uh, Llewellyn's wife, she's great in this. Um, most will probably remember her for playing, you know, Diane in, uh, uh, train, sp the train spotting films. Uh, she's great in those, uh, movies though. The first one is where she has the real most prominent part. Second one, she's in there, but not as much as in the first, but. This is a great film. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, cinematography is great too. I know I really don't talk about that much on my channel, but the look is incredible. And Roger Deakins, is there a, a director of photography as normal <laughs> or as usual? Uh, he, ever since Barry Seinfeld, like, uh, I believe that's his last name he like uh, just became a director you know he's best known for probably like men in black um now he's pretty much been their go-to uh uh dp though of course lately uh, the coen brothers haven't worked together in a while um uh, joel made a film uh like uh Macbeth with Denzel Washington um without Ethan 
while Ethan was like, he wasn't sure if he wanted to keep making films anymore, then he made a documentary about Jerry Lewis, or uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, or whatever his name is. I, the musician. I, I'm thinking of somebody else, and also it's late, so that helps nothing <laughs> with me, but you know, uh, he made a documentary. And it's up in the air whether the Coen brothers will ever make another movie ever again together. Or if from here on out, Joel will just make films on his own. And Ethan will do whatever Ethan's going to do. Be it, you know, continue to make documentaries or make his own movies without his brother. Um, regardless, um... I love every time they've worked together. Uh, they're excellent. I hope they make more movies in the future because it would be a complete shame if... Um, I believe The Ballad of Buster Scruggs is the last thing they ever did together. It'd be a shame if that was it. Um, not that that's a bad film, but... You know, it's like... I don't know. I, I just want to see them make more movies together. That's me. Uh, perhaps I could be alone in that, as people might think that they're actually just as great, if not better, on their own, making their own stuff, you know, and of course the stuff they made together was excellent, but, you know, maybe people might think Joel doing his own thing and Ethan doing his own thing is actually better for both of them. And maybe it is, but I love the Coen brothers together, that's me. I could be completely alone in that <laughs> thought. Which I don't think I am, but who knows? Maybe the consensus is it's good that they're doing stuff apart, but then who knows? Maybe to someday they'll come together with a story and just uh, make another film again. Um, I know some of the films they've written that they, but they didn't direct have, you know, some of them did well, like uh, The Bridge of the Spies, for instance. They co-wrote that with uh, a few other people. Like, they probably wrote a draft, and then somebody else came in and wrote a different draft. Um, but, you know, enough of their stuff got into the film, of the script that was used, so they got credit. But Anyway, um... That's it for this film. I love their stuff. The Coen Brothers. Everybody in this movie was excellent. Actors, actresses. Really fantastic film. And of course, that haircut that Harvey R. Bardem had is uh, really one of a kind. You know, it's just... It's just amazing. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you all had a great week. Hope you all have a great weekend and a great week too. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.